This is a guided walkthrough of the Relationships and Biodiversity State Lab. This lab can be particularly confusing, not only to the kids, but also to teachers. So I'm breaking it down into 10 steps that correlate with each of the tests that you have to complete in the lab. So the background of this lab is that there is a plant species. This is of course a simulation, so it's not a real species, it's make-believe. There's a plant species that can cure cancer. That species is going extinct, so scientists are trying to find other similar plant species that may also have the enzyme that they have extracted from botanic curists to cure cancer. To start, you will need relationships in biodiversity lab and the guided student notes. The guided student notes break the steps down in the sequence that they should complete the lab. And they also list the page in which they have to input data. So step one starts with the first page and it asks students to read the brief introduction. From the introduction, students will find the objective, which they will list in step two. They will also need to bring two components of prior knowledge into this lab, which is to define the concept of structure and to define how structural similarities between living things point to common ancestry. As soon as they have completed step one and two, they will move on to step three. Step three will begin with the most obvious comparison to show whether plant species are related, and that is the structural comparison. So students in step three, following the guided notes, will be asked to turn to page eight of the lab. So they will turn to page eight, that looks like this page, to this chart, the giant boxes. The rows along the chart indicate the species Botanicurus and three other species that are similar to Botanicurus. And so the task of students is to find the closest related species in hopes that that species may also have the enzyme that cures cancer. On the columns of the charts are all the various tests that geneticists and our students will have to perform to find species that are similar to Botanicurus. The first one is a structural comparison. So we will lay out just like this botanic here is on one side, XYZ, the plant samples that we have. Students will first, in column one, compare the structural similarities. And depending on the ability levels of students, it can help to give them a list of adjectives to use. You can put adjectives such as color, you can leave it rulers and ask them to measure the size, the width of leaves, leave out adjectives to describe leaf shapes and flower petals. If they are higher level, then you can ask them to compare the leaf types and give them a chart of the different leaf types. Otherwise, Whatever they write in their regular language suffices for this column. Column two will use the same papers, the same layout, and will now compare the seeds of each plant to find the similarities. Again, some things that students can note is the size of the seeds, the shape of the seeds, the colors of the seeds, the patterns in the seeds. Once students have completed steps three, which was the comparison of the plants, and step four, which was the comparison of the seeds, they will go on to step five, which involves the microscopes. So it helps to bring out the microscopes and set it up for the students while they are completing steps, columns one and two. Now the students with the microscopes will complete column three. To complete column three, they will use the slides showing stems from each plant. It helps to lay out the slides like this, ask students to 
to start with Botana curis and view that under a microscope. They must start with the lowest possible magnification, find the stem, and then gradually go up to a higher magnification while using the fine adjustment. Once they've seen Botana curis, they can draw or write about it in this column over here, column three, and they can go in series to view X and then to view Y and then to view Z. That concludes column three of the experiment. This will take students anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, especially if they're sharing a microscope. So you want to give them some time to do complete this part. Once they have completed the STEM comparison, they now have to go back in, in the lab to page two in order to form a hypothesis based on the structural components alone. First question asks, which plant do you think is most related to Botanicurus? And then they will form a hypothesis based on what they predict is the closest in relation to Botanicurus. That this part is indicated by step six, which is right after the microscope step. And then they will go to step seven, which is now paper chromatography. So it also helps to set up the chromatography equipment while students are on step six, while they are forming a hypothesis, and while they are on step five, when they are looking at the microscopes. After the microscope portion, students are ready to move on to paper paper chromatography portion. For this portion, have the students read the brief paragraph on paper chromatography. From this paragraph, they will define what chromatography is used for, and they will explain how paper chromatography will help them discover which species are sim most similar to Botanicurus. After they do that, they will begin the test. For the test, what they need is a filter paper, and the four different pigments from each plant species. This comes in the kit. The filter paper should be, for best results, cut into a square so it's easiest for students to see. The paper will have a line going down the bottom and labeled, and students will place each pigment on each dot. Once they have done that, they are ready to put it into the beaker of water. When asking students to fill out their beaker with water, you can ask them to fill it up to the lowest marking so that it has just enough to touch the bottom of the paper and no further. Once you have your paper labeled and all the pigments put in in the appropriate place, you are going to Bend your paper slightly like this, curve it so that it can fit into the beaker. You're going to fill the beaker with water up to the first marking. And then you're gonna place the filter paper right in the beaker and wait for the pigments to rise. This will happen fairly quickly. Within five minutes, the pigments should rise and give you a very clear indication of all the colors that are in each, each plant species. You can see it rising now. Once the pigments are, are clearly visible like this, you can pull it out of the water and lay it out in the paper and compare them. BC has shows this little bit of orange before it divides into a blue color. X shows a little bit of green or blackish green before it divides into a blue color and so on and so forth. Once students have completed the paper chromatography of the lab, you may want to end the activity for day one and complete the rest in day two. The next step after paper chromatography would be to complete the enzyme M test. After the paper chromatography portion of the lab, students will test for enzyme M in the four plant extract. My test kit for enzyme M um, did not come with a liquid plant extract 
that says indicator powder. So the indicator powder, powder that is really nicely presented in this bottle is just baking soda. It won't be enough for the process, so you can just take regular baking soda and preload it on the trays and have the students drop plant extracts onto that baking soda. The plant extracts are also easy to make. It didn't come in the kit, but they're easy to make. You can put them in little dropper bottles or whatever you have. The plant extract for B and C should basically contain vinegar and water. For C, it should also contain vinegar and water, and X and Y should just be water. This will simulate the bubbling action that Enzyme M does on the test um, powder. So there you have your setup. The second to last test that students will complete is a test called gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis is something that's conducted in a lab using various sophisticated equipment and gels to cut segments of DNA and to measure those segments based on their sizes. Gel electrophoresis is done for DNA analysis and to check for heredity and paternity tests. Students will conduct a simulation of gel electrophoresis using DNA segments that are represented by a paper segment. So we have, hypothetically, a strand of DNA from Botanicurus here, a strand of DNA from Species X here, Y and Z. Of course, these are not, these are not real DNA, but hypothetically, it is real DNA. For each strand, we will cut it where an enzyme would cut the DNA. So we will cut the DNA by placing a slash. Every time we see the sequence C, C, G, G, we will place the slash between the two C's and the two G's. So we scan and look for the sequence C, C, G, G, and place a slash between these two C's and two G's. And then we continue on throughout for all species. Now, cutting the DNA is only step one of gel electrophoresis. The second step is to separate these DNA segments based on their sizes. So we look at this chart. We have DNA sizes over here, and we have the four species that we're comparing over here. Comparing over here. We will take our DNA strand, we will do one species at a time so as not to mix the DNA strands. So I'm going to take my first one and I'm going to cut out the sequence up to the slash. I'm going to cut it thin so it's nice and neat. And then I will count trogenous bases in this DNA strand. So there are one, two, three, four, five bases and it's Botanicurus. So I will put this under Botanicurus and I will put it next to number five because there are five bases and it's Botanicurus. And I will glue this on in this space over here. After that is done, I will do the next one. So I cut. And I count the number of bases. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Then I put it in the corresponding spot. I do that for all species. And when I'm done, I will be able to complete this column, the last column. We have skipped this column, we will do this at the end, but now I am able to do this gel compa electrophoresis comparison. A short way to fill out this table is simply to indicate what DNA segments I have for each. So for Botanicurus, I've had so far five, and I had 11. So I will write five, 11, and I will indicate which other species is closest to Botanicurus. Once students have completed column eight, they can move on to the bottom of page seven. At the bottom of page 7 are the DNA sequences of Botanicurus and the three other species. Students will convert this DNA sequence to mRNA sequence 
and then to amino acid sequence. When students complete this task, they will be able to complete column 7 of page 8. Once column 7 of page 8 is completed, the lab is completed. Students will answer the remaining questions and conclude the worksheet. The Regents is saturated with questions from this lab, so it's an important lab to not only complete but also to know really well.